regarding fish. And uh, Dr. Espinosa, I realized that in the real world, you're in a very difficult situation that you're not speaking to vegan conferences, you're speaking to the general public and to get them to make any changes is a big deal. And so your approach um, to be not hyper extreme probably is very beneficial because then you're gonna get very little compliance if you try to be extreme. However, for the purposes of just a person who's trying to be optimal diet to lowest possibility of getting any health issue, um, where, what are your thoughts on uh, eating? What are all three of your thoughts on eating fish? Shall I start? Please. You better eat them quick because 90% of them are gone. I can tell how much fish you eat based on your methylmercury content in your body. Fish, they're, they're protein, they're cholesterol, they're fat, they have no fiber, they have no carbohydrate. You know, there's not much difference between a muscle that moves a limb versus a muscle that flaps a wing versus a muscle that wiggles a tail. They're all the same. And this idea that fish is health food, not only is harmful for people, what it's done to the planet is horrible. So get this nonsense out of your world, please. Fish are toxic. And you know, the reason that I think that they found that people eat fish are healthier is because that was, that was the, the norm then, people believed that. And so you found people who were better read, more concerned about their health, giving up beef, for example, and switching to other muscles, fish, for example. But that, that's the only reason we have that particular, oh, there's a couple other nonsense things out there like omega-3 fats and so on, that, that they're sold an idea that's wiping out our oceans. It's gotta stop. Hard to add much more to that. He's, he, he hit all the notes uh, in that song. Absolutely. I think the, when you look at a piece of salmon on your plate, you got to ask what's in there. What's the mercury content, the dioxin content, pesticides, etc. But beyond that, as John says, we are clear cutting the ocean. We, we're strip mining the ocean with these 10 mile wide nets that scoop up every living creature for every piece of wild caught salmon on your plate. There's dozens of seabirds and dolphins and turtles and rays and sharks and whales that have been caught in those nets uh, and, and killed off as by kill. Um, as he's saying, it's got to stop. We've no matter what role fishing played in human history in the past, hear this, we've used fishing up. We've used it up. The oceans are emptying out enough already. It's time to let the oceans heal. Let the fish off the hook already. Uh, uh, that's, you know, we used to do a lot of things. Uh, in the 1850s in Bedford, Massachusetts, the, the rock star guys on the wharf were the harpooners and you know, the whalers. And boy, we used to go out and shoot, shoot, ram those harpoons into the whales' heads. Yay, my God. We look at that today and say, I can't believe we did that. Well, eating fish, scooping up all the cod and salmon, all that it has got to be another one of those things that we used to do. But please, where there's going to be nothing left but jellyfish. And if the ocean dies, we die. And so enough with the fish eating. You get your omega-3s from plants, just like every other animal does. Uh, but uh, we, we, the, the, it's, we, we've used it up. Um, there, I can't see any rationale for continuing to eat it. And plus, it's toxic. As John says, the more you eat, uh, the more toxic you get. Let, let them off the hook. Well, um, <laughs> so um, I, I guess I'm not, I, I guess I'll just focus on the uh, nutritional and health components of, of fish and not on the environmental, uh, although that plays a role, but I don't think I'm um, knowledgeable enough uh, uh, in that area. Um, uh, so I think different, so I think some fish is essential and good for you. And I think that salmon is the best type uh, out there. Um, prove it, uh, it's in the research that I, at least that I've read um, and, and at least for prostate cancer as well. The problem, uh, there's very little mercury in salmon to none, depending on what, where you get your salmon from. So yes, the problem uh, is uh, with the type of salmon. So there is farm raised salmon that has BPA in it. And that when you go to a restaurant and you try to eat healthy and you ask for salmon, spinach and brown rice, that's a very pro prostate cancer dish. Why? Because the spinach is highly 
uh, filled with pesticides if it's not organic, particularly spinach. Uh, the salmon is farm raised, high in BPA, and the brown rice is high in cadmium, which is a heavy metal that's connected to prostate cancer. Um, some brown rice is not high in cadmium. Uh, organic spinach is fine. And um, wild Alaskan salmon is the best type to eat. Um, so I do think there is benefit there. I do think there um, you can, the, the problem that I find, and, and Steve, you said it fine uh, initially, like I'm not dealing with the people that are healthy. So I have to start them off somewhere. And I think the problem I find is that oftentimes we sort of set, set them up for failure because we're asking them to do all kinds of things that I don't even think they need to do, like give up salmon as an example, or, or some types of fish. Um, um, it, it, um, and the other problem with fish and salmon is overcooking it uh, as a release of prostate cancer. Sorry that I have to stay in my, in, in my uh, lane here. Um, um, cooking any animal be a product um, where there's uh, all this grilling and you know, promotes these carcinogenic compounds um, that in, that situation includes salmon as well. So d done the right way, it could be helpful. And certainly most of the studies as it relates to prostate cancer and male health um, are positive towards the consumption of fish, primarily salmon uh, uh, as, a, as a nutrient for, for, the, for those types of conditions. So that's- I think a, a couple of things need to be addressed. You know, one is that fish is sold for its omega-3 fats. Mm -hmm. No fish has ever made an omega-3 fat. No animal can desaturate at the carbon-3 position. It's impossible. Right. So, so anyway, um, you might as well go to the original source, which is the plants, and then you don't have to go through all the risk. Right. The other thing, uh, pesticides and environmental contaminants we've talked about here. The way you get loaded with pesticides and environmental contaminants is by moving up the food chain through biomagnification. So your plants have the lowest level of pesticides, any of these poisonous chemicals, any of the toxic metals, the lowest levels are in plants. And then the fish eats the plants or the cow eats the plants. And then the people eat the fish and cows. And then the end of the food chain is babies suckling off a of mother's breast. And the breast milk is toxic because of these environmental contaminants. So if you're worried about pesticides, you're worried about environmental chemicals, you better learn that the lowest concentration is on your grains and your legumes and your root vegetables. Your high concentrations are when you move up the food chain because they're fat soluble, these chemicals, and they get stuck in the animal's fat. So let's just get this in line in the proper perspective. One more thing, uh, if I can add to that, um, I, I do think that uh, a properly done plant-based diet can be helpful for some people, except that most people, it, it takes a tremendous amount of work for many people that I see to get enough protein. There is such thing as protein deficiency in many of the plant-based and vegans that I see. Never. Maybe they're Never. not doing it. I'm absolutely. sorry, I've got to stop this. There, this there, there is. is. There is. I no see it all the time. Dietary protein. You've never seen now, it. Now, maybe they're, they're not doing it. It so is what? impossible to do. The protein needs of human beings are so low. You can, you've got to stop this. Or I'm maybe going to put a stop that, to it. The this protein is not needs are. Uh, you are not going to continue to spread misinformation to these That's cultures. not misinformation at all. That's, true. that's actually research based. And I can oh, say I have tons of research on that. And no, that no, is my clinical papers, experience as well. On this. Now, what I would say is this, Steve. It's not impossible to be having not get enough proteins from a plant based diet. It's not at all. However, I, I think people, some many people just struggle to eat enough of the plant proteins that are essential and important. Um, so, I, I, but I see that people, you know, I, I do see people that are protein deficient again, not because I don't think they could get enough protein from their plants. Uh, but then they're, they're just struggling with doing it correctly. And the other thing is that I find a lot of vegans, again, we have to deal with the population as a whole, not our, you know, people that are like us. I don't work with people that are like me. I'm very disciplined with my diet, with exercise, with nutrition. I don't deal with people like me. That being the case, you have to start them off somewhere. Right. And since I don't think that many uh, that salmon is a, a bad food, so they include salmon in their uh, in their in their dishes uh, in their meals. 
Um, and the they what I've noticed is that vegans oftentimes become starchitarians. And they eat tons of not only good carbs and bad carbs. And I think that's more problematic for longevity, for heart disease, and for cancer than eating some salmon. So Maybe we should hear from Michael. Maybe he could. Well, I, again, I'm, 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 I, I think what, that what? I'm trying to be. So I don't have an axe to grind here. I'm not. I, I call it the diet wars. Ketogenic, uh, uh, plant, uh, paleo. I'm not into that. I'm into the evidence and what I see clinically. Well, let, let is it ahead. possible to, for plant-based people to do it right? I think so. I right. think so. But I just see that they're not doing it correctly and they're, they're struggling. So then I modify that for them. And, and since the research does not indicate that that's the only way to go, then uh, they go on a diet that I recommend, which includes things like salmon. Okay. Do you want, to, do you want the, the, the uh, discussions to go this way, Steve, or do you Please, have a plan? It, so slow it down. Right break it down one by one and go what through it. Do is we need to do a little history, a little geology lesson. Uh, what we did do is look at populations of people before 150 years ago. You know, you have uh, 2 billion Asians living off white rice. Hey, they almost went, won World War II and they did won the, win the Vietnamese conflict on white rice. You know, if eating a simple starch resulted in protein deficiency, why would you have such mighty war warriors? Why would you have such mighty societies? The Aztecs and the Mayans are known as the people of the corn. They lived and over 90% of their diet was corn for 1300 years. They, they fought battles, they competed in athletic events, they had babies. There is no such thing as protein deficiency or amino acid deficiency on any natural diet. And you know, to eat vegan is simple. All you have to understand is you need to make the bulk of your food like traditional people have, like the, the Aztecs and the Mayans, corn, or like the Incas, potatoes, or like the American Indian, the Native American. Hey, 12,000 years ago, they were living off potatoes. <laughs> the Asians living off rice. Excuse me, open your eyes, ladies and gentlemen. Don't fall into this nonsense about how you have to be super special. You got to carry around a dietetic handbook. You got to have a dietitian right with you to make sure you combine everything just perfect. Nonsense. This is why people are so sick. They listen to this garbage. Excuse me. Go ahead, Michael. Dr. Well, Spencer, I'd be very curious. You seem to see this entity fairly frequently. What clinical signs do you see in a vegan that makes you diagnose protein deficiency? And how do you prove that in your labs? How do you, how do you clinch that diagnosis, sir? Brittle nails, uh, hair falling off when they don't, when they don't have, uh, you know, hair is not, you know, they don't, they're not bald like me. Hair's like falling off, excuse me. <laughs> I think there's protein deficiency. Oftentimes there is, and they include more protein into their uh, diet and, and these things resolve. Their hair stops falling out when they and brittle, protein. brittle nails and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's any labs. I don't use labs to figure out protein. I look, I look at their, you know, physiology. Um, they look, um, uh, uh, they don't look, and, and just they don't look healthy. And when they include some meats, they look healthier, just just objectively and uh, subjectively. That is. Uh, I agree. I see, I see unhealthy vegans from time to time. Yeah. Just eating a lot of processed junk. Yeah. So I, so I whole, said that. Whole, please, if you are eating whole plant foods, rice, beans, greens, fruits, vegetables, if you are eating 2000 calories a day to maintain your weight, there is no way you cannot get at least 50 to 60 grams of high grade complete protein in those 22,000 calories. It's in the yeah. rice and beans and greens. I, I think There's I no agree. I think I agree. I think I, I think, like I said before, I may agree with that. Um, I think it's definitely possible. And I think that the population that I see. It's impossible not to, yeah, if, unless they're eating Oreos and, and cookies and colas. And many of them actually do that. Look, if then that's just bad nutrition. Uh, and right. the omnivores do that just, you know, probably more. But to say that is somehow implying right. that it's inherently protein deficient is simply biochemically impossible. And, and I, I, think, I, I think I think I said that or insinuated that that it's possible to get all the protein you need from a plant based diet, but most people don't. And the evidence doesn't show that uh, excluding things like salmon is a problem. So might as well include it. Well, eating salmon is not only bad for the salmon, it's bad for people. We've told you why. 
too much protein, too much fat, not enough fiber, no carbohydrate. You and eat the salmon with your broccoli. That's all the fiber in the broccoli or the whatever the, the plants that you eat. Yeah, you eat more into this conversation about protein. You know, one of my mentors, in fact, uh, one of the most important people in the field of diet therapy is a fellow named Walter Kempton at Duke University, who uh, used the rice diet for seven decades at Duke. The rice, rice diet was made of white rice, white rice, fruit, fruit juice, and table sugar. His patients were studied in metabolic wards, never found any deficiencies at all, particularly protein deficiency in these patients. You know, scientists for 150 years have known that the need of protein in the human being is so low that it shouldn't even be considered. Why is it considered? Because you have industry selling through unique positioning their products because they're high in protein. If I say meat, you say protein. If I say eggs, you say protein. Even dairy, fish, you say protein. That's just a marketing tool. And unfortunately, if I had to pick one thing, one nutrient, that has caused more death and disability to people than anything else is the protein myth. And that's the thing that's killing planet Earth right now, folks, is the belief that you need to eat cows and pigs and chickens and fish and salmon and other nonsense to be healthy. You're killing the planet. Yeah, you've killed yourself. That's, that may be okay with you, but yeah. it's not okay with me that you kill the planet by having this kind of nonsense go on. I'm not gonna put up with it. So let's get it straight. Um, as people get older, they develop sarcopenia, and, and that's because they have a pro that in part, that's because they have a protein deficiency as well, and they're not exercising, maybe. Um, but they definitely have a they, it, older people need more protein. Again, can you get enough? So to to respond to you that there's no such thing as protein deficiency, there is. And you need all macronutrients to be healthy and live longer and better. The question is how how much? And I think I've said it several times, I do think that it's possible to get it from a plant based. I just say, uh, I just see that it's very difficult for a lot of people that I see anyway. But let me ask you something. And it's probably too early in the conversation to ask, but I wonder right now, do you sell supplements? I sell supplements. Yeah. yeah okay. I just want to make that clear to the audience. I don't sell, I don't sell protein supplements. Excuse me. Well, we've heard a lot about about super nutrients so far. I just wonder if you sold supplements. I do. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. I think supplements, uh, Steve, uh, we could talk about that. I think supplements are absolutely essential. Um, it doesn't replace exercise and good eating it's, and or sleep. So it's fourth on the list. But I think to live longer and optimally, you need certain supplements to live to do that. But that's a, another story for a different day. But I don't sell uh, uh, protein powders or anything. Actually, I do. Sorry, he's a plant pro. You'd be happy, he's a plant protein powder. Mm -hmm.